Hey guys, Anime Princess here, and today we're going to be going over how to get the most out of the Aegis Aurora item. So Aegis Aurora is a very strong defensive shield that has a lot of synergies with Spark as well as Inquisitor. However, you can't simply slap it on and have it make us invincible. We do have to make sure we have the defensive requirements beforehand. So let's go over the shield. The shield gives us a lot of attack block, gives us a lot of armor, and the important line on here is the second last one that says recover energy shield equal to 2% of armor when you block. We can take from this that we want to have a pretty decent energy shield pool and we, we want to have a pretty decent armor value. And obviously we need to have attack block and spell block. Now our build doesn't inherently have that much energy shield as we're going for armor bases to crank up our armor value. However, there's one item that will fix the energy shield issue for us. Glorious Vanity that is sacrificed in the name of Doriani. When we get the Doriani variant, it will change the keystone into Corrupted Soul, and this will give us 15% of our maximum life as extra maximum energy shield. The other good node is Melding, which gives us 3% of maximum life as extra energy shield. Melding combined with Corrupted Soul gives us a ton of energy shield and it should be enough for us to get great value out of the Aegis Aurora. So energy shield is solved fairly easily, but we still have to solve armor. Now I would say the magic number would be 30,000 armor because 2% of 30,000 is 600 energy shield. And this might be between one third and one half of your total energy shield every time you block. And while you're mapping, we're gonna be doing tons of blocks against enemy attacks and enemy spells. So our energy shield is gonna be constantly chunking up by half, right? So how can we easily get 30,000 armor? The first place to start would be trying to get item bases that have base armor. You can get a lot of base armor on gear. And Aegis Aurora is one of those items. Aegis Aurora has a ton of armor. So thankfully we're off to a good start with the Aegis Aurora and just try and focus on armor on some other pieces if you can. Now as for auras, we're gonna wanna run Determination, which boosts armor quite a bit, as well as Defiance Banner. Now if you go Anomalous Defiance Banner, this will boost your armor even more. So that would be a good option if you can afford it. Flask play a really large role in improving armor as well. Rumi's is sort of a double value for us and is absolutely core because Rumi's gives us flat armor. It's a granite flask base, but it also gives us attack block and spell block. So this is your best friend with Aegis Aurora. A basalt flask has the implicit 20% more armor. And since we're aiming to get a lot of armor, it will be very good value to have a basalt flask. The other flask uh, mod we need would be the suffix percentage increased armor during flask effect now this goes up to 60 percent and you can technically boost that up to 75 percent if you have the implicit reduced duration but increased effect this one does not have that uh prefix so i would say this is a good starter kit for getting your armor value up there but obviously you can do some research on different ways to get more armor and you can crank it up even higher than 30,000 if you'd like. Now the last part of the puzzle is attack block and spell block. This shield gives pretty decent uh, attack block in itself. It gives 32%. Now as for on the tree, we can get attack block with the mastery right here, which is 1% chance to block attack damage per 5% chance to block on the equipped shield. It just Aurora has a high block chance, so this will give us a lot more attack block. Following the uh, spark guide, we are going to get a lot of spell block on the tree. We're going to get a lot of spell block on Tempest Shield. And if you want to get even more spell block or attack block, they are Ashling unveils on your body armor. One frequently asked question regarding Aegis Aurora is should we go glancing blows? Glancing blows is right here. And it doubles our attack block and doubles our spell block, which means we would only need to get 37 attack block and 37 spell block to go all the way up to cap. So this just seems like a really easy shortcut. However, there is the downside. You take 65% of damage from block hits and this downside makes this bad for our build. The reason this is just strictly bad is because if we're relying on Corrupted Soul to get our energy shield, Corrupted Soul will let damage go through our energy shield onto our life. If we're tanking lots of small hits, our energy shield is going to stay full, but our life is going to be taking half the damage and our life is going to be going down. 
So we don't want to rely on glancing blows to have really high block. We just want to have whatever block we can have. And when we do block, nothing goes through energy shield. It will feel way smoother, trust me. If you have any questions or comments regarding Aegis Aurora, please leave them down in the comments. And after this video goes up on YouTube, we're going to be live on Twitch, streaming some mapping and trying out the new Sanctum League mechanic. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.